And I forgot to give footage of drilling out the hole. Since I'm not needing to make a mold for this, I just need to basically dam off the, the bottom side so resin doesn't go everywhere. And what I do is I actually take hot glue and I circle them like that. That way there's no bleed over into the other ones. And then on the top, I can overfill it that way as it cures, if it shrinks a little bit, it can be self-contained. And I actually marking which ones are what colors because there's nothing worse than pouring the wrong color in the wrong hole and then realizing, oh shit. And then you're kind of screwed. I was gonna weigh out the micas, but I was using such a small amount of them that it wasn't even registering on a gram level. But I wanted to make sure all these were identical, like amounts of material versus the mica that was used. And I used famo wood, which is a, a two-part epoxy resin. This stuff takes 12 minutes of stirring. I'm saving you all that hassle and it's only gonna be 30 seconds of stirring for y'all. See, people say I don't care. Actually, no one really says that. You stir for six minutes and you pour it in another cup and stir for another six minutes. It's a pain in the ass especially coming up here in a little bit because I started weighing out identical amounts into each color didn't make enough of the epoxy for the uh, blue and purple so I had to do up a second batch which I was pretty disappointed with myself in but yeah, shit happens actually took the excess uh, resin from each cup and over to the left or well I'll probably crop that out but there's a little uh, unicorn mold that I just started pouring the excess in to get some kind of cool colors this was after stirring up the second badge and then finally getting all six of them I like to give it about two to three days of curing just to be sure. Then I go to turn the handle on the lathe. This process actually took 15 minutes. Turning on a lathe is super easy and doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, but I sped this up to be about just shy of three minutes because it's still kind of fascinating watching the uh, de-evolution of a block of wood into round it off on the left hand side there's the post that the leather falls will be wrapped around and first step in turning is getting the whole thing rounded uh, sometimes you can actually run a blank across your table saw and knock off all the corners I usually don't do that when I'm doing small handles like this because it, it's not that big of an issue but when I'm doing like the bigger ones bigger blanks then I definitely knock the corners off it just makes life so much easier
And then I start cutting into it, and that right there on the left, I, I call it the bell. It's just basically the area that once it falls are wrapped around the post and they're kind of butted up against the rest of the handle, then it kind of goes into that bell shape, which actually gives you a little bit better grip for uh, holding on to it. And anytime I work with epoxy like this, I'll sand up to 600 grit just because the resin is so susceptible to scratches from being sanded. You have to go up those higher grit levels just to help smooth it out and try to retain that kind of glass like surface. Now, if this were completely encased in resin, then I would actually break out micro mesh and wet sand it up to what is it, 20 thousand just sanding off the end Yay. now comes the leather boom leather there's nothing like the smell of leather. I actually have a little template here so when I unroll an entire thing of leather I can put this template on it and then just kind of cut out a loose shape because it's difficult working with an entire hide like that. Then I go back in and square up and basically you're just trying to get a big rectangle to the dimensions. I run this tape line because on the left there is about an inch and a half of material and that's what gets wrapped around the post. So I make sure all my cuts only go up to that tape line. Plus it kind of helps keep the whole thing down a little bit. I know on the right side I don't tape it down, but I used to, and when you have to peel the tape off of every individual fall, it's kind of a pain in the ass, so I just learned to deal with it like this. I call it the wrap, but it's what I use to wrap around between the, the falls and the bell, using stainless steel screws to attach it. I'm a firm believer in over engineering so that's why I also staple. My goal is to make sure this bastard does not come off. Then here's that wrap I was talking about. It just kind of provides a more uh, more aesthetic Cutting it to the appropriate length and using a good old hair tie. So when I get it wrapped on there tightly, then boom, can keep it in place till I get the tacks ready. Just kind of mark eyeball positioning for where I want the three of them to go. There we have it. Yay, don't forget the lanyard. I wanted to thank y'all if y'all have made it this far that uh, y'all fucking rock. Please be sure to subscribe, comment, like, Hit the bell notification. Tell me you love me. Tell me I'm fucking beautiful. Get a fucking online banter going in the comments section. Y'all rock. I mean, I'm having a ton of fun doing it right now. And uh, 
every time you do all this stuff, it helps kind of encourage me to keep going and keep doing it. Also, be sure to subscribe to all of our Instagrammer, Twittery, Facebookery. It's all down in the thingamathingy. And uh, be sure to go to our website. We love custom orders. It's all right there. Reach out to us. We love having the limits pushed. And don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. You'll get all kinds of special incentives and deals. Find out what we're up to. We're trying to promote other vendors with it. Also, what we're up to and what events we have going on and stuff. And when you get the confirmation email, be sure to confirm it. That way you can keep getting the newsletter. Until next time. See ya! Oh yeah. And happy pride. Happy pride!